Our creator put us on this wide, rich land and told us we were free to go where the game was, where the soil was good for planting. That was our state of true happiness. We do not have to beg for anything. Our creator had taught us how to find and make everything we needed from trees and plants and animals and stone. We lived in bark, and we wore only the skins of animals. Our creator taught us how to use fire in living and in sacred ceremonies. She taught us how to heal with barks and roots, and how to make sweet foods with berries and fruits, with papaws and the water of the maple tree. Our creator gave us tobacco and said, send your prayers up to me on this fragrant smoke. What was daily life like for Ohio's Native Americans? What did they eat? How did they dress? What kinds of houses did they live in? Who did what? The answers depend on where the people lived and their tribal traditions. Like we live today, many of Ohio's Native Americans lived in a variety of settlements or villages. Some were nomadic and lived in temporary camps. Their housing ranged from wigwams to log cabins like those of the Delaware people. The Seneca built longhouses of posts and saplings covered with bark. Sometimes the Shawnee made a plank house that was something like a log cabin with a bark roof. But no matter where they lived or which band they belonged to, they all needed a source for water, wood, and the opportunity to hunt for game. The foods they ate depended on the time of year. For many, the cattail plant gave them different things to eat. They followed the migrations of birds and animals and paid attention to the growing season of wild plants. While many were hunters and gatherers, some Ohio natives were farmers. In silence, our corn, beans, and squashes grew from the earth, and these we ate. We drank only of clear water after the milk of our mother's breasts. Our foods are sacred. Our grandmother taught us how to hunt and raise these foods to select seeds and continue the best strains. Different groups traded among themselves to get a variety of material for the tools of daily life and for ceremonies. Central Ohio natives discovered and used flint Nearby in Michigan, they found copper. Without the ability to make tools, they couldn't have built houses, tended to their gardens, or make clothing. Later on, they traded with the settlers. For many years, we traded furs to the English or the French, for wool blankets and guns and iron things, for steel awls, needles and axes, for mirrors, for pretty things made of beads and silver. So how did they move around? In the early years, mostly on foot. Those who lived near lakes and rivers learned how to make dugout canoes from tulip poplar trees, or canoes covered in elm bark. After the Euro-American settlers began to arrive, the natives could trade for horses. What did they wear? Our most common picture of how Native Americans dressed comes from the Hollywood Western movies. We've seen pictures of tribal chiefs wearing colorful bird feather headdresses, men wearing individual feathers and war paint, Native women in fringed buckskin dresses. Some of those styles of dress did exist for the natives living in the West the Apache, Cheyenne, Comanche. But Ohio's natives relied on materials found in Ohio. We know they made clothing out of deer skins that were tanned and hung over a smoky fire to make them waterproof. We also know that they knew how to weave fiber from the inner bark of trees. The early men wore breechcloths, aprons and kilts. Women wore simple short skirts and leggings, and they all wore moccasins. Some made designs on their clothing from stamps made out of carved stone or wood. They also did this with paint. Sometimes they dyed a design into the woven cloth. Some clothing was decorated with beads made out of copper, stone, bone, wood, shell, and even horn. They also used porcupine quills and moose hair. One unique way to decorate was to use the freshwater pearls from Ohio's rivers. After the trade began with the settlers, Ohio's Native Americans began to see and use wool and cotton, cloth, silk, ribbons, glass beads, and trade silver. Later on, they adopted European styles of dress like cotton shirts, blanket coats, with leather or wool leggings, and women began to wear cotton blouses. For some of Ohio's Native Americans, this meant the end of a way of life. But now the things of the white men have corrupted us and made us weakened and needful. Our men forgot how to hunt without noisy guns. Our women don't want to make fire without steel, or cook without iron, or sew without metal awls and needles, or fish without steel hooks. Some look in those mirrors all the time and no longer teach their daughters to make leather or render bear oil. 
We learned to need the white man's goods. And so now a people who never had to beg for anything must beg for everything. But how did Ohio's Native Americans pass their time? Much of it was spent looking for food, fishing, hunting, gathering, farming, but it wasn't all work and no play. Native people played a variety of games. Today we play games to have fun, keep fit, and to learn. That was true for the Native people as well. But they also played games for one other reason, ceremonies. For the children, games like toss the sticks and spear the moose taught hand-eye coordination, the ability to judge distance and motor control. The adults would also play games of chance with dice made out of wood, bone, or antler. They would toss a wooden bowl full of dice into the air and make a bet on how many would land back in the bowl or on the blanket. Another popular game was called Chunky, played with a carved round stone disc that was rolled along the ground that you tried to knock over with your spear. Many Chunky stones have been found in prehistoric sites, and Native people still play the game. Native Americans spent a lot of time playing music, dancing and telling stories, but not just for entertainment. The Delaware say that music is the breath of prayer and it accompanies ceremonies and dancers. These art forms were often used to teach lessons to the young people. The instruments included drums, pan pipes, rattles, flutes, whistles and bells, and these are still used today. Some instruments, like the drum, are sacred. The drum's shape represents the earth, its sound the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Dance is also important to the native culture. There are two forms of dance, ceremonial and social. Ceremonial dancers are a visual prayers. These prayers are used to ask for help from the Creator. Social dancers are used to meet, to socialize, and to have a good time. And Ohio's natives told stories for fun or to pass on the history of their nation, their spiritual beliefs, laws, and moral beliefs, and to explain where they fit in the creation. Kichimanitu, the great creator, was busy creating everything, and when he was done, he saw that he had some parts left over. And he decided that he does not want us to waste anything that belongs to this earth. So he decided to make one last animal. And he took all the parts he had left and he put them together into this last animal. He picked it up in his great hand. He blew on it, blew life into it. It sat up and looked around. He thought it was so cute. He took his great hand and he stroked it and he patted it and he stroked it and he patted it. And wherever his great hand touched that animal, it left either stripes or spots. And that, my friend, is how the chipmunk got her stripes and her spots. The Great Spirit is in all things. He is in the air we breathe. The Great Spirit is our father, but the earth is our mother. She nourishes us. That which we put into the ground, she returns to us. So in this state, which we call Ohio, named for the river on our southern border, Native people began as wanderers, but learned to build homes and form communities. They use what they believe are gifts that the Creator gave to them. Clean water, abundant animal life, and fertile soil to feed, clothe, and house their families. And through their art, music, and storytelling, they passed on their customs for many generations. <laughs> Don't know what you're saying, who wins a dick? No, I don't know who's going to go.